westerns, cowboy movies. Eh, westerns were not cool when I was a kid. I don't know if it was a generational thing or a regional thing. To me, they were just dirty, dusty, and dull. Who wants to watch a bunch of guys with their slow southern drawls and their cowboy hats and their string ties bragging about how awesome they are at roping cattle or going down to the town saloon and getting into a drunken brawl or sitting around strumming their guitars and singing about how much they love their girl or their horse or their gun. Psh, not me! I'm too sophisticated for that. Well... This is going to be one of those videos where I confess to being wrong and atone for being a prejudiced snob. Here, in the order that I saw them, are the five westerns that somehow squeaked past my radar and convinced me that, okay, fine, westerns can actually be pretty good. Number one, The Magnificent Seven from 1960, 128 minutes long, directed by John Sturgis and starring Newell Brenner, Steve McQueen, and Eli Wallach. Plot, a small Mexican town hires seven gunmen to defend them against a merciless horde of bandits. Okay, if you're trying to get someone who thinks that westerns are absolutely not cool to change his or her mind, then I'd suggest that this is the one you start with. Yule Brenner, cool. Steve McQueen, cool. They're cool on their own, and they're doubly cool together. And you would think that that's enough cool for one movie, but no! This movie also has Charles Bronson, James Coburn, Robert Vaughn, some guy, Brad Dexter, I don't know who Brad Dexter is, Horst Buchholz, and playing the villain Eli Wallach. Now, this movie has the same director, the same score composer, and three of the same actors from The Great Escape, which I have talked about raved about briefly in another video. I do think that there are a couple of kind of vague similarities between the two, and that the first part has a lot of fun, and it's witty, and there's adventure, but in the second part, as the action heats up, things get more serious. It's kind of like those impossible mission war movies, except it's not set in a war, but there's still the battle of the few versus the many, with the villagers caught in the middle. The main theme by Elmer Bernstein is great in the sweeping, lively tradition of big western scores. And even though it was a dirty and dusty movie, it really wasn't dull at all. <laughs> Number 2, Stagecoach from 1939, 96 minutes, directed by John Ford, stars John Wayne, Claire Trevor, John Carradine, Thomas Mitchell. Plot? A group of travelers on a stagecoach find their journey interrupted by conflict. Unlike The Magnificent Seven, which in my opinion has kind of a crossover genre feel to it, this movie is quintessentially western. It has cavalry versus Indians, appearances from classic western types, it's directed by John Ford who turned out several of the most famous westerns in film history, and it's got John Wayne before he was John Wayne and wow he is really lean in this movie. I had no intention of liking this, I just happened to catch it right at the beginning on a day of Thomas Mitchell movies and because I like Thomas Mitchell I was like okay fine. I'll see how it goes. It didn't take me long though to figure out that there's some stuff in this movie that is right up my alley. A mismatched group of travelers stuck in an enclosed space forced to endure each other's company and then forced to rely on each other for survival. Hello! Of course that's something that I would like. That focus on the characters rather than the big shootout stuff is what makes it stand out for me. There are some great performances from Claire Trevor who plays a prostitute being run out of town and Thomas Mitchell playing a doctor with a drinking problem. The interactions between these social outcasts and the so-called respectable people in the coach are sometimes humorous, sometimes painful, and I was really pleasantly surprised by just how sensitive some of the scenes and some of the relationships that develop are. But the action stuff is really good too. <laughs> Number three, High Noon from 1952. 85 minutes, directed by Fred Zinneman, starring Gary Cooper, Grace Kelly, and a whole lot of other famous people. Plot, the town marshal has just married a Quaker girl and turned in his badge when he receives word that a man he put in prison has just been pardoned and is on his way back to get his revenge. Gary Cooper plays the man not with just one moral dilemma, but with kind of 
a plate stacked high with moral dilemmas all of a sudden. Does he run away or does he stay and defend himself? Does he stick by his bride or by his town? And is anyone gonna stand up and fight with him? Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly are both on the right side, but they're on opposing sides on the right side. They both are struggling to do the right thing, but what they have to decide is what is the right thing. The song in this movie, Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling, it's relevant and it plays throughout. Holy cow, it just gets stuck in your head. It just keeps drumming and drumming and drumming. And one of the most famous things about this movie is that it takes place in real time. And there are shots of various clocks here and there to remind you how much time has passed and how much time there is until noon when the bad guys come into town. And it really ramps up the tension as the minutes tick down and the allies disappear. Number four, True Grit from 1968. 128 minutes, directed by Henry Hathaway, starring John Wayne, Kim Darby, and Glenn Campbell. Plot? A teenage girl asks a cranky U.S. Marshal to help her track down the men who killed her father. Like with Stagecoach, I just happened to catch this movie right at the beginning. I was in that weird end of Christmas Day stupor where you've been crazy and excited all day and you've eaten a ton of stuff you probably shouldn't have and you just want to pass out on the couch. I was so ready to take a nap, but then this movie was on and I got interested and then I kept watching and then I was wide awake. John Wayne is older here, playing one of his most famous roles, Rooster Cogburn. I don't consider myself a John Wayne fan, but I do appreciate it when he's doing his thing. And it's always fun when a movie features a couple of ornery people developing an unlikely friendship. Kim Darby as Maddie Ross is kind of odd, but given that her character is supposed to stick out and people are supposed to stare at her, then her oddities and the strangeness of her diction or her behavior actually fits. <laughs> Robert Duvall is in this movie and he's an antagonist, but he's really nice and likable for an antagonist. And then Glenn Campbell, who I didn't even know acted. I don't think that at the time I could even name any of his songs and I was just like, he's a singer, I think? Turns out <laughs> we started listening to this oldies internet radio station and his stuff started coming on and I was like, that's Glenn Campbell? I really like that song. I had no idea that was him. Oh wait, I really like this song too. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, first of all, I like westerns now. Second of all, do I like country music too? What? Anyway, everything about this movie was completely unexpected and I really liked it, except for the rattlesnake scene, which was horrible. And my mom said that she read the book when it came out, so I'm thinking I'm gonna do that too. Number five. I can't do it very well. Number five, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly from 1966. 161 minutes, directed by Sergio Leone, starring Clint Eastwood, Eli Wallach, and Lee Van Cleef. Plot, there's three guys, none of them what you might call heroes, and two of them tentatively team up against the third to beat him to some buried treasure. This is the third movie on the list that I saw completely by accident. If we hadn't just caught it coming on TV and it hadn't been a Saturday afternoon and we didn't have three hours to spare and my dad wasn't there, I probably wouldn't have ever seen it. This is not a movie that I had thought like, oh, I want to see that. Was not interested at all. And I would have missed out because this is the big daddy of westerns. It's the biggest spaghetti western, and some people say it's the best western of all time. I can't believe it's over two and a half hours because it didn't feel like it. It's gritty and tense and clever, with a lot of sweating and smoking and staring. It's more like glaring, really. It's got a couple of really funny scenes, which I did not expect. And it's also probably one of the manliest movies I have ever seen. So those are the five westerns that made me stop hating the genre. I'm not saying that I love westerns. There's a ton of them and there are a lot of them that really aren't great. But I'm definitely more likely to think positively of them. There are a few common themes among these five movies. Bandits, outlaws, guns for hire, moral dilemmas. So I think westerns that have those themes 
games are probably going to be the ones that I enjoy more versus, you know, cattle stuff. Thanks for watching!